They're just best friends who smooch. Hello. Hey, everybody. Hello. Liveness. Liveness. Hey, I think we got, we got audio. I can see audio anyway. Hello. Hooray. We're good. Hello. Can, uh, can we be heard? Does audio exist? Please confirm, oh chat, that you can hear audio us. Audio is good. We're good to go. Well, in that case, let me welcome you all once again, internet friends and webcomic fans. Uh, uh, it is I, your friendly neighborhood dungeon biologist, uh, welcoming you to another episode of Trash Heroes, the Dungeons & Dragons stream where we recount the epic adventures of this wildly improbable collection of horrible creatures we call the Trash Heroes. Uh, our players, as always, this collection of uh, wonderful internet cartoonists, uh, check out the links to all of their work uh, and their support systems and their social media uh, up in the thingamajigger. I don't remember which way I'm supposed to point. That way. I'll point, I'll point both ways, and then I have to be right. <laughs> um, We're always wrong, and, one uh, of the two. And please, uh, please do uh, support your local artists. Uh, everybody has some Patreon links up there. There's also a Patreon for the stream itself in the About page below, along with some other cool links that will always be there. Uh, and not just when the stream is live. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce the characters. Keeper of the vermin, protector of the trash heap, it's Fetid Quaggle. That's me. Hi. Uh, next up, we've got... Hey, maybe I should turn my light on. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not hey. good. I'm sorry. Whatever. It's fine. What is it? Why no light? Why no light? There we go. Uh, next up, the larger-than-life pit-fighting superstar, Ugna Sugartus. That's me. With yeah. new tattoo. Woo. I don't new, know if I can see it above tattoo. there. Hey, Everybody can see it. My bird. Yay, there's a bird. Nice. My cool bird. It, has anyone who is surprised that Alina has a bird tattoo <laughs> is, should now leave the chat it's because absolutely. you're not a real fan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gatekeeping. This um, bird tattoo is as big as Meg. I measured. <laughs> perfect. It is perfect then. Yep. Uh, next up, it is our trickster cleric, rogue baker, and all around party animal, Tromlin Darioles. I should be holding up a milk carton with my picture on it. Right <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? Tromlin, I pine for you. Oh, and oh. finally, our sweet old grandpa, who's also accidentally an ancient warlock, Copernicus Sunshine. Oh, hello there. And, and has no legs. Uh, let me recap, speaking of having no legs. Oh, yeah. Uh, Randy, 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 brace yourself. Brace yourself, Randy. We're all full of some... Uh, uh, um, A uh, few things have places. happened. Some things have happened. Randy on the, on the, on the, I the game the that he, he disappeared. Y'all so, uh, <laughs> We've made some choices. <laughs> yeah, so sneaking through the wilderness of the Blackthorn Hills with their new guide, the uh, Wolfling Garm, uh, from a tribe of half half halfling half freaking wolves um, uh, the party discovered and attacked a floating pirate hangout uh, that was attached to the side of a floating rock above the broken lands uh, with the intent of stealing their uh, their little flying boat uh, and this led to a prolonged fight with some eagle riders uh, and while attempting to fly a novel uh, machine uh, while you know, cursed in various ways so the only person with the skill to operate a uh, a, a regular boat uh let alone a flying one uh it was ugna who happens to currently be blind um so that that's not a problem at all no i've actually been uh, doing very well uh and so uh copernicus uh who currently has no legs uh was magicking up some sails made out of ugna's blood in order to speed the boat along to uh, evade their pursuit uh, and thank goodness uh, that you guys had uh, a cursed uh, fetid ranger with you because uh, using ranger spells uh, to mess with the giant eagles helped to uh, allay your pursuit. Um, fetid currently, of course, being missing a hand and also glowing with eerie, sickly green light. It's fine. Um, yeah, it was fine. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Professor Manair Smurf McGargamel was uh, thrown off of the boat uh, in the process, but uh, uh, luckily, as a wizard, had some Featherfall uh, stuff going on, but was very quickly left very rapidly behind uh, as the, uh, the boat careened across uh, the landscape, uh, uh, mostly out of control. But when the fight was mostly won, a hero point was spent, uh, allowing us to fade the camera to black 
uh, and pull the party back together so that effectively once uh, losing pursuit with this new found stolen ill-gotten boat uh, flying boat uh, the party managed to reunite with uh, Megargamel and Garm and the uh, the two remaining Swolums uh, and Uncle Finster and find a place to camp for the night. Uh, and in fact, made very good progress in tracking uh, the, the lost school kids from the Sunshine uh, School for Peculiar Youngsters, um, who of course have been uh, kidnapped by Copernicus's evil shadow, uh, who we will uh, refer to from now on as Fopernicus. Um, so making camp for the night and finally getting a long rest, uh, the group discovered some illicit glowing pink magical powder on the, the little uh, pirate ship. I eat uh, the good and stuff. Accidentally spilled some, which created a cloud that caused a shared dream, uh, a vision relating to Ugna's mother's rune sword and its original forging. Uh, Copernicus was able to scribble down some of the runes uh, that were from the uh, the missing uh, segment uh, of the broken sword that Ugna bears, uh, which is uh, which is good times. Um, and in addition, before the vision faded, so a huge beefy wizard was seen to be doing the forging. And as the vision faded, someone off camera exclaimed, uh, the phrase by the gods and Caligon, what have you done? And uh, I can't recall, I believe Fetid uh, may have uh, uh, said something at that point about and Caligon the Black. Um, I did, yes. Yeah, which indicates that uh, this is maybe a name that is not unknown to some of you. Ooh, Intriguing. Um, <laughs> Uh, however, uh, no further discussion occurred because after the vision, um, the party got uh, even more stoned uh, and there was a, a, a very amusing series of conversations. But uh, Ugna was getting a little maudlin being worried about Tromlin. So Copernicus decided to contact other planes to see if the otherworldly Dark Lords might know where he is. Always good to summon um, a demon when you're stoned. Yeah, and so very the good. answer to the questions... Uh, um, uh, ignoring the answers that were to the 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 uh, accidentally asked questions, the ones that mattered, was a, a revealing where Tromlin is, which is quote lost in the depths of the seventh level of Abaddon. And uh, for, in answer to Fetid's question, how do we get our bro back? Uh, the answer was he will be rescued by one who has known his body. And this led to much additional giggling. I just saw Randy's eyes, eyebrows shoot up. Well, I mean, that means no one in the party is going to rescue me. Yep. Indeed. But uh, Ugna's uh, response to that was like, oh, that could be anyone then. Yeah. <laughs> like, they did not yes. it very much. No. Um, so after the long rest, the next morning, Garm announced that he had scouted ahead and determined that the school kids were only a few hours uh, ahead of you guys, somewhere over the next ridge. Fed had sent a pigeon to scout and look around, and, and sure Gar enough, Gar he's found Garmigel the... Uh... Is, is male? Sorry? Is Garmigel oh, this male? Is, this is Garm the wolfling. Okay, gotcha. This is the little the little obnoxious halfling. A, in the general um, room, I, I put the drawing of the other one. Okay. Veneer Smurf McGargamel? McGargamel, yeah, okay. Excellent. solid. Perfect. Um... And in fact, uh, through the pigeon's eyes, Fed had determined that the kids were being herded along by a gang of smaller demons uh, with Copernicus's shadow, the Fopernicus, uh, hanging out with them. But Fopernicus spotted the bird and apparently realized what it was because he smiled and immediately summoned the demon Agrajag, oh, who is shit. well mm -hmm. known to hate Copernicus mm -hmm. and sent the demon bounding over the hill. Uh, and we ended the game session with a round of combat and at the end of the round, when Copernicus was about to cast a banishment spell on Agrajag, Fopernicus appeared out of invisibility and counterspelled it. Uh, and that was where we left off. Don't like it. I don't like how many spell slots he obviously has. Don't yeah. like it at all. He's clearly done. He was flying. He was invisible. He summoned a demon. And he has done a counterspell. I suspect yeah. he has this more is, spells is... than you do. <laughs> This is yeah. not normal warlock procedure. Yeah, the only thing worse than a demon is a wizard. Those guys are the worst. <laughs> Gargamel is like, hey. 
I uh, repeat, but we're not going to pick it up with the combat. Instead, okay. we're going to pick it up in the seventh level of Abaddon. Uh, so okay. when the curse was triggered uh, and uh, Tromlin rolled a natural one as his saving throw. I'm sorry. I think um, I rolled that one. <laughs> yes, it was indeed. <laughs> okay. It got me out of the game for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it got you into a shadowy hellscape. Uh, a it dark is underworld. There anyway, eventually. <laughs> it is a dark underworld of endless slime and dripping water juxtaposed with uh, black rock and lava flows and choking fumes. Um, and uh, this is a place where spider demons skitter through the shadows and dark serpentine nightmares slither and dwell in the deep pools. So, I needed a vacation um, anyway. Yeah, so Tromlin fairly quickly finds himself being uh, pursued by skittering, chitinous uh, spider things um, and uh, spends what seems like an eternity fleeing through this hellscape of uh, choking ash and uh, dripping slime. Everything is like bathwater warm or too damn hot. Um, it's a, it's a, a very dark and shadowy, but like warm and volcanic, uh, kind of place. It's like an evil Iceland. <laughs> so what do you want to do about this predicament? It seems I mean, untenable. I mainly do the obvious. First off, I do the obvious things. Like make sure I maintain, I do my best to maintain normal prayer cycle as much as I can. Um, I don't know how praying to a god in the depths of hell goes. Well, it depends on the god. Well, Who are you going to do some do praying I... to? I guess I should roll my d30. <laughs> yeah, why don't we roll some dice here? It is, after all. Uh, how many the, demons um... you got on that god list? <laughs> a few. Hmm. 15. What was the roll? 15. 15? Yep. Uh, yeah, that's uh, Brandobaris, the halfling god of thievery and trickery, uh, who is not much used to. Uh, highly charming and witty, evoked widely by halflings in most parts of the world, his symbol is a bare footprint. I think um, that your chosen can... prayer provider does not have coverage in this area. <laughs> 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 yeah, the network keeps getting disrupted. You're, mm -hmm. you're having some... I mean, you get some spells... I mean, don't That's go with AT&T. Kind of That's your problem. Um, I'm also going to see if I can try to find any other beings who are stranded here that aren't tightness and scary. Um, you do, uh, you know, occasionally encounter um, groups of uh, frequently uh, under, you know, uh, underdark type dwellers like drow and, and goblins um, in like kind of work camps with demons uh, you know, cracking whips over them. Um, you certainly have the means to deal with the average demon that comes along here. Um, so your your halfling god here, uh, Brandobaris, is not, um, you know, the the most ideal to these environs, but he still will grant you your spells. And that means that you can, um, you know, definitely sling some... Uh, uh, some of the kinds of damage that demons are not particularly fond of. Let's just say. Um, so I'll do your, that. Your radiance. I'll try to help people as much as I can and basically create a small party. Because I don't want to do, like, I don't want to be in hell alone. Yeah. Uh, in which case, you will you will quickly gather to you, um, you know, a couple of, uh, of uh, you know, half insane goblins uh, a, uh, a a drow lady in tattered rags uh, that you uh, managed to spirit away from where she was being forced to, to haul some sort of foul mind substance. Um, a, uh, a, a a bugbear with uh, much of his hair singed off. He's all um, burned on one side of his face, and they and they call him the the dog. How many of the goblins are insane? I mean, all of them, but these two in particular. <laughs> Okay, um, for those two, I will use two of my um, second level spell slots for lesser restoration to cure insanity. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Sure. 
they're, they're still pretty nutty because they're still pretty goblin-y, but they'll... I mean, they'll, that's fair. But you'll, like, you'll, uh, you'll basically get them, like, they'll, they'll sort of be doing some kind of horrible, repetitive task, and the casting of that uh, permits them to sort of break out of it and uh, uh, join your party uh, uh, gratefully. You manage to take out a couple of, uh, you know, demon overseers. Um, like, like, you're a decent uh, level character. You can, you know, get a... Uh, a beam of radiant. Um, I forget the spell that you often use for your um, uh, uh, single light. target radiance. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I can't really move it, but that. Uh, that particular attack is really, really effective against low level demons and can practically one shot them because they're all susceptible to radiant damage. Oh, right. um, so you manage to collect a few weapons uh, and arm your party. You, of course, still have all of your equipment. You disappeared with with all of your belongings. You, in fact, found yourself initially sitting on a pedestal um, uh, when you to. appeared here, like a like a like like some kind of weird plinth with, like, lights from, like, crevices in the, in the dark ceiling far above playing on it, like spotlights. And mm -hmm. you're kind of like, yes, this is correct and proper. I should be. <laughs> they should have a museum built around me. Um, but... Uh, you know, a few moments uh, later, you kind of get blasted off of the pedestal as the uh, the ruby appears uh, and sits in its normal place. And you realize that you basically were, th as the curse was triggered, you were thrust into the, the place of origin of this stone. Um, that and that's when the skittering things came out of the darkness and started chasing you. Well, you open the text pad and I'm going to, I do like, you're going to hate me for this. What's the name of my new part? Of name oh no, of I'm, part I'm of happy to come up. I've got a I've got a master names document. <laughs> so, give me two seconds to pull up that document, and I've got lots of cool stuff for you. I am, uh, I'm, I'm loving frankly, the adventures of uh, Trickster Cleric in Hell. Yeah, it's very good. Cleric, hanging out in Hell. Where is my? I'm master name absolutely list? gonna try to seduce that. Uh, good. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe goblins. Yeah. I've had goblins before. I'm not like they're okay. They're, they're kind of selfish. They're not the best lovers. <laughs> Listen, I, if you're I, in I hell, kind of, like I'm... just go whole hog. Do 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 an orgy. I mean, like <laughs> I know it's, it's a little rude to, to, in you know prejudice to be like, oh, they're all selfish lovers. But in my experience, where like, oh where has my you gotta watch out for the teeth too. Your teeth is they're they're a little bitey. That's the adventure right there. I, I, have you ever been with a, a knob goblin? Because they really earned their name. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Welcome to Trash Heroes, everybody. Oh, <laughs> dear. Um, I'm truly drawing the buff wizard hammering out a sword. Oh, good. Excellent. Excellent. What was his name? Ann Caligon? Ann Caligon. Well, you don't know if that was Ankelagon. You just know that the person said, Ankelagon, what have you done? Mm. You don't know if that was referring... It seemed like it was referring to that person. But you might need to, like, talk to your friends a bit. And you said he was what, he was a really big Ankelagon dude, is. but he wasn't... He was looked human, right? He looked human. He right. was very large for a human. Yeah. Uh, he was black-haired and bearded, uh, with huge burly arms... Uh, and he was wearing a black robe with uh, runes inscribed around the cuffs. Oh, and he's the, not wearing a robe. Yeah. Right now. Well, in this case, he's probably wearing some kind of uh, forging no, he's, attire, he's fantasy working, bondage gear. What, yeah, whatever the, the small, skimpy fishnet version of a robe is. <laughs> no, I have him like he's hammering, so he's working the the forge. So he's just wearing as little as possible. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. It's hot, and you don't want to like catch your robe on fire. Yes. Yeah. Much better that you catch the fire directly on your body. Yes, correct. Good, good. Look, if you're a high enough level forge cleric, you get damage resistance. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. So uh, the uh, the two goblins are named Crick and Creek. Okay, that's adorable. Um, that's very good. Now the entire campaign is just about saving them. <laughs> that's yep. how my Sunday this game tends to this go. This is kind of how this normally goes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the um, the drow's name is uh, um, Kaelmuth. Kaelmuth. C a e l, m e t h. C a e l t. M. M e t. So Kaelmuth. 
M E T H. <laughs> Math. Yep. C K A L E M E T H. Kale Math. <laughs> Sounds like a yep. like a yep. weird hippie. Yep. Drug. Kale is like meth. Kale meth is elves. just weed. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like that Tromlin also got stoned and then hung out with demons. Yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, and you guys were like, uprising. <laughs> you guys are just doing it in different places. Exactly. Uh, and then there is a uh, the, the the last one, the bugbearer. Um, his name is Gulk. Good. But his Ooh. friends, the friends call him Dog. 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 And half of his face is burned. You say? Yep. Yep. Half his face is burned up. He's a big guy. That ain't gonna stop yep. me. I got a quota to make. <laughs> the more people who have known my body, the more people might rescue me. <laughs> I don't know about that part. I, know, I, just, heard. I, I just put in the okay. chat a beast wool wizard camera. Oh, good. Nice. Excellent. So, see that. Um, so you, uh, yeah, your, your new little uh, party of friends uh, together, you're able to sort of uh, uh, duck around and evade... Uh, a lot of the uh, the dangers down here, um, uh, and it, uh, obviously it's a couple of nights because uh, uh, the party has had a couple of nights. Although it it seems longer, uh, every time you rest, you get up and you uh, you randomly close your. I'm assuming I'm picturing that uh, Tromlin doesn't have like a D30. He just closes his eyes and like sh as part of his prayer, he closes his eyes and kind of shakes his keychain. Until until he's got a holy symbol, then he opens his eyes and prays to that one. So, well, but when he's not in hell, uh, he has like a little roulette wheel he rolls. Okay, got a little spinner. But you but you like, still have your stuff, so you could still do it that way. Whatever is um, for your the preference. second night, uh, I rolled a twenty. Oh my God. Mm hmm. Uh, twenty is uh, Dedun, the lion head Leonin god of prosperity and wealth. Uh, he is a, yeah, a god of old Nubia, the ancient kingdom of the Ixian desert, but still revered, particularly amongst the tabaxi in the jungles of Zaru. Uh, he's basically pictured, depicted as a heavy set figure with expensive robes and jewels and the head of a lion, and his symbol is a lion's head. He sounds like a lion version of a rock Sasha. Um, yeah, kind of, but think more like a, a lion headed version of a merchant god. Gotcha. Um, again, fully able to grant you your spells, but not That's... too specific to the space. Um, the second day gets a little hairier. You've got your little group around you, and you're thankful because you basically determined that you wouldn't survive, wouldn't have survived without them. Yeah. Um, you pick up a few other stragglers along the way, but uh, you also lose a few, um, you know, in your various uh, you know, daring escapes. Um, you know, one like disappears down a well of fire. Others are like grabbed by uh, demons that you're as you're going past. You go down a hallway where the all of the walls are made up of clutching, uh, um, chitinous clawed arms that uh, grasp at you. Um, you know, uh, the bugbear leads the way. Uh, Gulk um, leads the way uh, with the axe you found for him, like slashing at arms, but. Uh, a couple of the stragglers of your party are pulled off into the shadows and disappear. Um, you manage to cast some more radiant light uh, down and the, the hands all draw back. Uh, you find yourself brandishing uh, whichever holy symbol you got handy a lot more than usual. Um, yeah. You know, at one point, things get so hairy that you just start brandishing like different holy symbols, like hoping, you know, maybe one of them will... Actually, at a certain point, I think I would grab the one of uh, the goddess I fucked. Oh, of Lolf. Yeah. Arachne. I forgot that was Lolf. Oh, my God. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, in your territory, honey. So there is a point booty when call. you are on... <laughs> the is it a There's... booty call? Is there half spider? Yeah. There, so I got a lot of booty. It's a... It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a... It's a, yeah, it's a spinneret call, I don't know, an abdomen call. Oh boy. Um, so you, uh, you're, there's a point where you're on a, a hillock in a, an enormous, like almost endless cave. Like the ceiling is so far away you can't see it. The sky is just dark with 
stalact, uh, stalactites, get the right one, um, and flittering bat-like things in the shadows. Uh, and on this hillock, you and your small party have been like hemmed in by just a sea of the skittering spider demons, and you're just like, okay, pull out this one, and begin praying to Arachne to to lull the uh, uh, Lady of the Night. Um, and uh, a weaver of fates, grandmother spider. And as you do so with that, that holy symbol, which is of course a silver spider on a sable background, uh, this particular disc, um, the, uh, the spider things draw back. Uh, and eventually one side of the hill where you are facing the crowd of spider creatures parts. Um, and a particular uh, lady comes forward and you recognize her from the waist up uh, because she is in fact uh, the avatar of Loth that you encountered uh, in the Northlands um, whose name by the way uh, was the Lady Weft hmm. I immediately dropped her knee Lady Weft uh, like, the Lady Weft uh, in this particular case instead of just looking kind of purely drow like however uh, has the lower body that is a giant spider. Um, and uh, on her back, on the giant spider back, she has this enormous silken sack of web that uh -oh. mer merges up into a, a huge flowing silvery gown uh, that, you, that you recognize. It was the gown that she was wearing when she appeared uh, in the Northlands. Uh, and she, you kneel... Excellent. Of course. Still a god. Got a, I'm still a cleric, but not still a god. <laughs> I, I, I've still got a black token. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, and I'm she, the black token is directly linked to her. Uh, it hmm. is. Uh, and she uh, comes right up to you uh, with her little spider creatures all sort of backing off. Um, looks at you for a moment, and then she says, You never called, you never write. You haven't come to visit. Wink. <laughs> she folds like her arms and then like some other arms, come, like the, the spider arms come around and fold as well. Further down. In my defense, you were way out of my league and I didn't know how to. Well, you could, I mean, you could have drummed up a blood sacrifice somewhere. At least you could have come to visit. You never told me where you lived. I mean, I thought it was obvious. She like gestures around at the, at the hell around her. Like, the only time we ever met was in a forest, and you also never called. Well, I tried, but you keep you keep praying to other gods, and then the message doesn't get through. Do you want me to commit to just you? She that that she brightens up enormously. Although I will point out that this is just just an avatar of Loth specifically, but um, a particular still an avatar. Day. I, I thought that I mean, spiders were supposed to have. I... I, I thought spiders were supposed to have some kind of quality or something on their legs in in their webs that stop them from being clingy, but. <laughs> um, but she says at least you could have uh, you know come to visit your kids. I have kids. Uh, I'm very excited about that. And I think <laughs> I, I will oh, no. now ask Alina to remove the black token. Oh no! <laughs> As she slings the silken bag off of her back and tears a part of it open, and it is swarming with tiny little goat spider babies. Um, Traumlin cries happily. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. What are uh, names? She says, oh, I don't, uh, you know, you don't name them until they get uh, big enough. Uh, they've just started eating each other. So soon, soon the strong ones will come out and we'll, uh, and then we'll name them. They got to oh, molt at least a few I times. I to talk to you first. <laughs> Wonderful news. I'm so happy. Like, Trump is generally excited about this. They're starting to like they're swarming up her body a little bit from where she's holding open the bag and she's sort of like like 
swats at them to go back into the into the sack. They're just like, yeah, you can like see them crawling all over each other, and like the bigger ones kind of like tearing at the smaller ones every once in a while. They their little mouths open, and they just make like just the most terrifying little howly noises at each other. It's My like baby. begging birds. <laughs> My babies love them. Fighters. They've all got like little yolk sacks still attached to them. Um, but yeah, imagine like tiny baby spiders, but they're also kind of human faced and kind of goats. So uh, you're um, going to have to update that family tree both. <laughs> a lot of There's a lot of names. <laughs> we don't update until the last survivors are standing. Yeah, until, until we know a, how many are going to make it. That was a family web. <laughs> Um, you know, Tron was excited. Like, he's actually crying happily about it. Aww. Well, I'm glad to see you're happy about it. You're, you know, I'm going to expect some kind of child support from you for this, you know. Uh, yeah, like, well, I mean, do you want me to also share custody? Well, that would be, you know, I'd really like to be able to, uh, uh, to take a few hours away from, you know, Carrying the sack around. Yeah. Would you? Absolutely. Yes. Look. Uh, I approach her again, get back down, and like, look, I want to be involved. Like, these are they're my kids. I, I didn't have that, and I want them to have it. And well, I this know... is... This is wonderful. This is perfect, then. I was... I, I was... I, I'll admit, I was getting near a point where I was going to, uh, you know, send, the, like, a... Demon attorney. I know that's a redundancy, but um, to uh, uh, to serve you with some kind of papers here. I mean, you know, we need we need some. Uh, you know, you, you gotta you gotta we need some blood to go around. Some, you know, um, you know, to show help. her how committed I am, I take my key ring, I take the other key, um, holy symbol off. I put my backpack, and I only keep her holy symbol on. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Ooh. My goodness. Okay. I was putting a ring on it, dude. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, in <laughs> that didn't case... didn't expect that I took it. Like... No, I didn't. So, uh, in that case, she, she delightedly... She pulls you into a hug, mm -hmm. um, which turns into, like, your body is lifted off the ground. Yes. Uh, and then you kind of slowly start to turn as she's starting to like weave some silk around you. I, I let it happen. And and uh, shortly you find this sack of spider offspring has been woven to your back in like a baby Bjorn kind of backpack sort of way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she sets you back down uh, amid your terrified companions. Uh, <laughs> I will attempt to give her a kiss on the cheek as she holds me up. Aww. Oh yeah, she'll, she's into it. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you like make arrangements for you know some kind of custody sharing situation. Well, um, I'm assuming I can't like this is the best she can do because she is still an avatar of a god, so we can't mm. be together per se. I mean, she's got her career, right? So yeah, and say so, I told her like, look, I still want to be with you, but I understand that your skill just doesn't allow that, not fully. But uh, she is so delighted that she. Uh, I'm assuming you 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 ask at some point. She will facilitate getting you out of here. Um, I, I say, look, I don't want to cause a problem for you. Uh, if you need to keep me here longer. Um, just if you can get these guys out for sure. I point to the companions because I want them out because their lives are in danger. I feel a lot less in danger right now. I mean, I need no, to get to my party eventually. Obviously. She can, uh, she can, she can sense the magic that's on you and like basically send you back to the place where that you entered the hells from. Okay. I mainly just will make sure that the, the people here who are in danger are taken care of too uh, she can yeah she can um she can basically return you you and your party through the way you came 
Um, I do also ask her, so do you want me to commit to just you, or do you want to be able to see other people? <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, she's an avatar. I'm a mortal. I'm not stupid. <laughs> so it, 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 it depends on what you... Uh, uh, now, honestly, she's not particularly... Um, I'm trying to decide whether she's just like... The full spider thing, of course, would be to like, okay, well, no, we're done now, so I'll just consume you. But that uh, obviously she's uh, that that uh, denies her the um, uh, you know child, child support. So, <laughs> so that's no good. Um, but like, well, do all spiders eat their mates too? No, 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 there are there are a lot that do things other ways. There's actually um, my personal favorite are the 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 male spiders that. Uh, don't actually directly interact at all with the females mm -hmm. because of that type of interaction with the males are so much smaller. Uh, there are male spiders that will basically make, they make a sperm package with their silk and they like leave it somewhere. And then, and then they, they hide. <laughs> <laughs> the females are like, oh, excellent. I can fertilize my eggs. And it just, that is it. It's just, they've oh noped out. God. Of the yep. interaction entirely. There's also yeah. colony-based spiders that um, like yeah. live communally, and the the females tend to like raise their babies in a big creche, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But also, I think in that situation, the males are also like, "Here's some sperm, bye." Yeah, <laughs> I am food if I stick around here yep. too much. Um, so I think um, I think this is the time, and I want to get that first poll going. Oh. So I'm going to ask my uh, my players to step away from out of the, the chat from the chat. And we'll get the first poll of the night uh, going because I'll need it uh, in a bit here. Uh, Name but... the spider babies. <laughs> so as always, that would be a long poll. That's so a big as poll. always, my uh, uh, my lovely um, audience. Oh, and I hope that poll was set up with a reasonable cost for channel points. I don't know if my shadow DM remembered that he has to set the number. Uh, oh no! Where's my sketchbook? I'll be right back. In any case, uh, as always, yeah, it's back to 25 is what it's set at right now. We'll maybe play with that uh, for future, but we cut it back down. Um, so as always, audience, everybody can vote uh, for free in the poll. You can spend channel points. Unfortunately, Twitch has full on uh, changed it so you can't have bits for votes anymore. They've Dude. done away with that, but you can still use channel points. Uh, so I encourage you to try and vote multiple times. If there's something you particularly want to see, um, bring those votes in and let's see uh, which of these amusing uh, uh, eventualities are going to occur. I'm drawing something uh, that's so minutes, cursed. Ten minutes as usual for the uh, for the poll. I basically try to hammer out what our relationship, do you, what does she want from us? And like, if she's like, no, I just want childcare. I'll back out. Yeah, she's sort of like she. Honestly, I think she's going to be like kind of confused by what you mean by relationship. Like, I'll, I'll try like, to explain. Like, look, in mortal situations, you don't necessarily just like have one person. Like, they continue a romantic relationship as well as taking care of the kids. No, not all <laughs> mortals don't tend to eat their partners. She like shakes her head. She's like, mortals are weird. Anyway, I'm not into I'm, I'm not into that weird kinky mortal stuff. I don't know. So, those, do you want those... to meet and fuck, or should I just take on the kids for a while? Sorry, do you? Did you? I missed the first part of what you said. So do you want to occasionally meet and fuck, or am I just out and we're just sharing kid custody? Oh yeah, both is fine. Okay. I'm sure there will be points in time when uh, when it is appropriate. All right, fair enough. Um. <laughs> But you don't want me to, like, romantically just commit to you. Do you want to be able to see well, people? Well, see, she's an avatar of a goddess. So what by commit romantically, do you mean you will only worship Lolth from now on? That's a pretty well, big I'm commitment. About, I, okay, I'll try to explain to her. Like, from, from a cleric standpoint or purely from a relationship standpoint? I'll say, well, I'm, uh, I'm actually talking about two things. For uh, cleric standpoint... So she can get hold of me because we have children now. I will, for at least until the kids are older, commit religiously to her. She's she's definitely for that, uh, as with, as makes sense. Being an avatar of a goddess, she's like yes, yes, cleric. You should only worship Wolf. I said 
until the kids are older and can sustain themselves, fine. But I'm talking about, like, you and me in a personal relationship, or do you want to be able to see and consume other people besides me? Well, of course. Okay, so that way I know I'm free to see other people as well. Yeah, I just she's like, she do something. made somebody this morning. Like, it's... Okay, well, I, just, I was like, I just don't want to do something that will hurt your feelings. I don't want to be with someone and have you feel like that I betrayed you. I just, I'm trying to think of your feelings. Nope. It's fine by her. I mean, in okay. fact, if you need to, like, you know, uh, you know, if you need, if you also wish to fuck and eat people, that can be uh, consecrated to Lolth, and then that helps to support the kids, right? You, you know, the occasional blood sacrifice uh, or whatever. I probably won't. Yeah. I probably won't eat them, but I will. If if someone is bad enough, I will let the children eat them for sure. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. That's exactly you got. You know, that's the kind of child support she needs. All right, that's fine. Excellent. So, you know, a little prayer, a little proselytizing, maybe. <laughs> I love that my, my new party's watching, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? What, what is uh, happening? He saved us, but he worships her. <laughs> so he well, the, um, her. the drow has been, like, like prostrate, prostrated for this entire, like, just completely, like, face down on the ground in supplication. Since this person has shown up, okay. So we have made up a deal. I'll say again. I asked like how how long before the, the children mature. I do want to know. Like since I'm not used to hybrid avatars. Oh, before you know it. Okay. Nice and big. They grow up. Be like, shows, they grow up so fast, and like one one big spider arm makes it tear away. That could be fifty years from now because <laughs> she's an avatar. Correct. Or it could be a week. This is a very cursed drawing. I can't wait to see it. Oh, keep those votes coming, people. I've got a very interesting early lead, but this could still go anywhere. Well, then I will turn to my party and say, well, good news, guys. I think I have a way for us to get out of here. My... I look at her. I'm again, off again, girlfriend? I don't know. Um, it says that she can get us out. Um, I do need to bring my kids with me. Hope that's okay. Uh, yeah, like, um, Gulk is just, like, completely, this is just all going over his head, and he's just like, we go home? Yeah. Um, Crick and Creek are just like, whatever it takes, just get us out of here. Yeah. Do my, do my best, buddies, I promise. Uh, and Kalemuth is like is still lying face down on the ground. Uh, and no. in fact, at this point, Kalemuth will like. <laughs> oh God, that's so cute, cursed. Let's see, where is it? Is it in the chair? Oh, the horns are still little nubs. They're just I nubs. See. He's just a baby. Yep. He's there's, just there's, a baby. There's there's some there's some hooves got to be in there somewhere somehow. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm doing I'm drawing the same thing right now. Be Good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Of course, of course. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Kalemuth will actually like uh, leap up and run over uh, to the Lady Weft, um, and like drop to her knees and and uh, begin um, uh, in uh, the uh, the undercommon mixed with some Elvish, uh, begin sort of. Uh, pledging herself to Lolf and uh, uh, in, in very short order, it gets kind of weird pretty quickly where she, that she's like offering to be sacrificed and, you know, you know, drink of my blood, feast on my entrails. Kalemuth, uh, Kalemuth, 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 you're trying way too hard, honey. <laughs> and, uh, Keep it cool. Keep um, it cool. But the Lady Weft is sort of impressed enough that she'll, like, lay a hand on, on her forehead. Uh, and uh, Kaelmeth will sort of, like, bear a mark uh, of Lolth, the, the web of Lolth afterwards. Um, and uh, Kaelmeth will basically decline to come with you back to the, the world above because uh, she's seeing a way to kind of maybe get some power down here. Okay. 
Well, I will congratulate Kalmuth and I'll say, well, I hope things go well for you with uh, this, with this evil handmaid kind of it's a good gig, direction okay. you seem to be taking. <laughs> the goblins, of course, are just like, fuck that. No, Get no, out of here. No, because they are the, usually the first ones to get eaten. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, fuck this noise. Um, and there's like a blinding flash of just malevolent red light, and you find yourself back in the clearing with the rotting stump uh, and all the mushrooms uh, where the, the floating gem had been, which is no longer. And it's, um, in fact, uh, the dead of night. Um, I see my party's not here. Uh, you will, in fact, see, uh, after a short look around, smoking and smoldering on the ground is uh, the uh, form of a gulk who sits up and, like, sort of pats his fur to... Oh, I'm at my original party, but I'm glad... The yeah, original party is not here, but these, these guys are. Um, and uh, pretty much immediately, um, uh, Crick and Creek are like, well, like wide-eyed stare around at where they are and, and realize, recognize the broken lands and be like, thanks, see ya! And bolt. Here, guys, be safe. Bolt into the, into the undergrowth. I'm, I'm completely fine with that. That does not hurt my feelings remotely. I would... If I was a goblin, that would be my... Actually, I, yeah. I say to the goblin, um, if you're ever in Mud Hollow, look me up. Cool. One of them will, like, throw you a thumbs up over his shoulder. And he'll run off. Um, Gulk uh, will sort of look around confused for a while and then be like, hmm, huh. thanks. Of course, buddy. <laughs> uh, he'll grab um, a, a nearby... Uh, uh, dying oak and wrench a branch off of it. So he's got a club, thump, thump, thump. The axes and other demon weapons that you had kind of recovered for the party had, did not come with you. Um, wow. But he arms himself with a club and looks around and goes, hmm, and goes stomping off into the hills. Take care. It was nice meeting you. Uh, leaving you to your own devices. That went very well. Um, I will start looking for my party, and I'll also try to look for some animal to sacrifice to my babies. Excellent. We are getting quite the menagerie. Oh God, are we ever? We have multiple, <laughs> multiple pets. Some spider These are babies. pets are my babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> We are going to be able to retire and make some sort of weird fantasy zoo. Yes. Um, okay. Slash orphanage. Yeah, you, slash. You now have nursery. Like everyone now has some some uh, pets to carry around, except Copernicus. You've got Barb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's... Barb. It's true. Yeah. We got a, we got a ghost. Uh, we got a pseudo dragon. We got a mm-hmm. uh, owlbear. Yep. I, I do believe that uh, the, the the poll is done. Cool. Is it and, safe to go uh, in the chat? Yep, it is safe to go hey, in the chat. I'm going in the chat. Okay. All right. So the poll is done and logged. Sorry, I did not treat that black token as the black token. I was like, "Oh, cool, baby." <laughs> I mean, it's great. no, that's fine. It's still, <laughs> it's still not like, and it's, it's not, not an inconvenience. Um, well, it's an so inconvenience, but I imagine once we get back to a city, it's gonna be mm-hmm. uh, like, "What are those?" Ah, flee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to find a way to disguise them in cities. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Also, that it's really screws up your house's that, line of succession. <laughs> So Tromlin, yeah. So Tromlin, you are, um, uh, you now find yourself uh, in the wilderness. Uh, you know generally the trail that your your group was following, but you're not, uh, you don't have Fetid's nose. Um, so what's the plan from here? Um, I will attempt to look for clues of where they went. I can't imagine that a 
blind orc being piloted by half of a warlock uh, was particularly stealthy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, let's. Why don't we tr attempt a? Uh, I'm just double checking whether you have any ranks at all, but a survival roll could potentially. Why is it opening that with the wrong? Hang on a sec. Um, like, you don't have any ranks in survival, but it's like you've got a plus four. Okay. So let me roll. Hang on. I just realized that the uh, character sheet stupidly opened in Edge as a default, which I do not like. So I'm just reopening them in Adobe so I can properly look at them. Um, I got a 19 plus 4. That's a 23. Ooh. That's pretty good. Cool. Uh, well, in that case, uh, yeah, it's not that hard to follow uh, the... Um, the trail, the group is not yet using Pass Without Trace at this stage. They were um, more interested in just following the, uh, the, the school group. Um, and the school group were using various modes of being hard to follow, but uh, um, Fetid was behind them with, uh, with his, with his scent, scent tracking. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, yeah, you're able to follow the trail through the wilderness uh, over the, the hills deeper into the blackthorns um eventually uh however you start to get to where the terrain is really really rough and bad and you start to have the encountering of um undead uh as there are sort of gangs of of uh zombies and ghouls and other things roving this uh this black craggy blasted landscape um, and the trail eventually just stops, um, which is not too surprising because Fetid often uses the Pass Without Trace spell uh, yeah. to make it easier for your party to be stealthy. But of course, that also erases uh, traces of your passing. Um, yeah. You will reach a point where you do see the floating rocks in the skies above the landscape. Um and uh, I'll get you to make me a, a perception check. That is something I do have. A... That's something you're quite good at. A plus seven. So, so... I'm using a dice roller because my kid is in my dice again. Mm. <laughs> oh, the spider babies. Um, that'd be an 18? Uh, yeah, you, you spot that same particular giant floating boulder over the hills that has... Uh, a, a sort of a, sh a small shack uh, embedded in the side of it with a dock. Um, and in fact, you even notice uh, that there are a couple of giant eagles perched on extending logs that's thrust out from this, uh, this shack uh, up there. Um, you vaguely recall Copernicus saying that there were um, uh, sky pirates that dwell in these hills. Uh, and you assume that those are some of them. Okay. Um, well, I know where to kind of go. Mm hmm. Are you, you're going to head towards that? You don't. You don't have a trail anymore to follow. I don't know what else to do. Uh, you could also look into some of your. Oh, this isn't your character sheet. Um, some of your magic options, because you do have some potential ways to try and. Uh, uh, find a way to contact the group. But perhaps while you look into that, mm -hmm. um, this might be a good time for me to switch to the other group. We are all being violently murdered. Mm -hmm. I've drawn so, a very cute prancing spider baby. <laughs> I already have. So you, what's that? What's happening? I had to draw more spider babies. They're very fun. Um, yes. I am actually posting mine in the general chat. Oh, right good. Now. Do you want to share any of these drawings, uh, Alina? With yeah, the, let me see if I can. With the stream. So they too can bask in this oh, glory. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, no, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> so I already have an initiative order. Oh, I love it. From last time. Uh, so speaking, I'll... I need to go check on my daughter. I'll be right back. Mm. Speaking of initiative, uh-oh. Uh... -oh. Mm. uh so I'll remind you all that the initiative order was that Garm was going first, 
not surprising since well, he's right. very, very uh, twitchy. I'm and still fast. hanging out with us. Uh, Ugno was second. Curse. Indeed. Ugno was second, followed by Agrajag, followed by Fetid, followed by uh, the, the remainder of the school group. Uh, so Megargamel and uh, Finster uh, and the Swollums. And finally, Copernicus uh, in the uh, initiative order. And you don't yet know where in that initiative order Fopernicus belongs. Uh, I seem to recall that okay. Agrajag was like right up in my grill uh, yes. trying to bite my face. Yes, he was. Like or or okay. more to the point, trying to hit you with an axe. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, really I... wasn't trying to hit yeah. you with an axe. He was trying to hit Copernicus with yes, an axe. Yes, but I put myself in between oh. Copernicus and Agrajag, because yes. that's what you do. And Copernicus got sent... Uh, you are well between because Copernicus got sent flying backwards with one hit from Agrajag. And that is where we're at. Does everyone have their, their damage recorded? Yep. From before? Because I just realized I don't have that written down. Okay. All right, yeah. well, then the first thing that happens is uh, that an arrow comes flying out of a bush uh, at Agrajag, and it strikes him and does some damage. Because apparently uh, there is a feral halfling uh, with a bow out there. Um, this does, however, mean that Agrajag, Agrajag's body makes another fart noise, uh, and there's a green, nasty... Emanation. Oh, good. Uh, That's from, fine. From, from his nethers. From that? Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, uh, only those yeah. who are in hand-to-hand -hand combat with him. So yep. it's just Ugna right now. So Ugna takes another four damage. That's fine. From Bart Acid. I, I've got another... Tank damage. Another field of uh, damages from him so far. Uh, and... That's Garm. So next up is Ugna. All right. Well, I think it is time to continue hitting this guy in the face. I don't think I've quite noticed uh, Fopernicus yet, because uh, there's a demon in my face. So let's... Uh, you, I don't know. You can't really miss him, because he That's just true. appeared out of nowhere a short ways away. That's true. And undid Copernicus's spell. So Copernicus basically sitting on the ground on his stump with no legs. Copernicus waved his arms around and did some kind of like dark magic chanting as he often does. And a blast of magic came out of his hands towards uh, Agrajag. And then another Copernicus appeared floating in the air a distance away, spoke another word of magic and gestured. And then that beam of magic came and interacted with the first beam of magic and they collapsed and kind of canceled out in the middle. I so that, rolled that was kind of hard to miss. A... How smart is Ugna roll? And I rolled as maximum <laughs> as I could. So, instead of continuing to hit this man in the face with my axe, or with my hammer, uh, there's like a moment of Ugna looking over his shoulder and seeing that happen, and then sort of frowning in thought, like like almost like she's got like mm. indigestion. <laughs> she's like... Mm. Oh, tactics. Uh, and then I am going to grapple Agrajag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and try to toss him at Fulpernicus. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, <laughs> yes, throw the demon we'll at that man's a face. Technical weapon. <laughs> okay, so you are grappling with Agrajag. Yep. Do the thing where you like, right. you hug him and then you go over and throw him. <laughs> yep. So roll your attack roll, mm -hmm. or your... your uh, your attack roll, but it's your strength <laughs> athletics. Don't forget that you yep. have disadvantage. Oh, that's right. Ooh. And give me your low roll. Okay. Uh, well, I had an 18, but my low roll is a 10. Uh, however, mm -hmm. I add to that my athletics, which is 11. So that's 21. Okay. Agrajag has rolled a 15, and he adds to that his strength and athletics. Which is a lot. Uh, strength uh, and athletics, or just athletics? Because athletics strength, is strength. Well, your athletics yeah. is strength That's athletics. true. So yeah, that's 11. Uh, so he has exceeded your role. Oh, man. So you go to grapple, you, yep. you grab a hold of him uh, and try to like move his body and he chooses not to be moved. Gotcha. 
And now you're slow dancing with aggro. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Dragon red. <laughs> this is dancing <laughs> oh, Hang on. on. In fact, actually, uh, so because you beat his armor class, you did grapple him. Okay. So you grab a hold of him. But he's not moving. Yeah, yeah. Because he's too he strong. He doesn't move, but he does squeeze out another fart. Good. Uh, I squeeze so him too two tight. More damage. That's fine. Um, I've still got another attack, though. I'm gonna continue yep. this. You're gonna make another attempt? I Just wait a second. I don't see any of that because I'm blind. Oh. <laughs> I don't see Fopernicus. I'm still grappling them, though. I I swung and I missed last round. Uh, I don't know where he is. I'm just trying to grab him. I'm gonna throw him somewhere. Ooh, maybe not. That's an eight. An 18 and an eight. <laughs> I'm rolling really good, but I have disadvantage. Uh, so that will only be 19, which I don't think will beat his strength. Okay. Our DM has frozen. Well, your total was, sorry, was what? Uh, Am I frozen? Nope, nope. Sorry, you were just adding okay. stuff up. 19. Uh, no, he manages yeah. to exceed that. I didn't roll great, but I rolled good enough to beat yep. that. Disadvantage. All right, that's uh, what I do this turn. Uh, and... I slow dance with Agrajag. Uh, he'll only do one fart. From your attacks there, because you're not really doing damage to him. Yeah. Just when you first grabbed him and squeezed, I was like, well, obviously. That's no, for sure. He's a fart out of him. For yeah. sure. Even if he wasn't a demon. Um, so next up after Ugna is Agrajag, and he is going to um, displeasedly attempt to uh, bring the axe down upon you. Uh, actually, no. I know what he is going to do. Uh, he's going to do two things. So first of all, with your second attempt to grapple him, um, having sort of released on the first one, you, you lunge at him and he instead actually belly bounces you. He goes, boing, and you bounce <laughs> off and fly back five feet away from him. Good, good. Uh, and then he follows up with a two-handed axe strike and he brings the axe down at you. Uh, that will be a 23 to hit. That, uh, definitely hits me. Right. Mm. I'm a rolling some damage. All right. Uh, math. I don't like it. 14 damage. Oof. And a follow-up attack. Uh... Will also hit you with a 21. Yep. And we'll do... 9 and 6, 15 damage. All right. Still still standing, no problem. Yep. And he is attacking you mainly because you are between him and what he really wants to attack, Correct. which is Copernicus. I can take these hits far better and than Copernicus. He'll <laughs> snarl and yeah. howl at Copernicus in the process. Yep. Oh, oh, Copernicus! I don't get you. Uh, next up is Fetid. Okay, so uh, what can I see? I can I can see Ugna attempting to grapple with Agrajag. Uh, yeah, and Agrajag I, hitting her with a giant serrated axe. I can see Fopernicus somewhere as well. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, maybe like 30 feet beyond Agrajag, okay. floating in the air. Uh, Copernicus it... is on the ground. On his mm -hmm. stump, uh, behind okay. uh, Ugna, he's uh, now only about five feet behind Ugna, okay. and uh, uh, Agrajag, so he's not very far away from the fight. Uh, you also uh, I... you do not see Uncle Finster because he went uh, and uh, hid on the other side of the boat. Um, mm -hmm. You see the two Swolums just kind of standing in place by the boat, um, mm -hmm. and you see. Uh, Professor McGargamel uh, on the boat, having attempted to cast a firebolt spell that missed last round. Okay. Uh, step one. I don't like Perny being that close to 
our big stinky friend. So I would like to use my gathered swarm to try and pull him closer to my position and thus you further away. You can indeed do that. Do you I resist it anyway, Copernicus? No, actually, um, if if uh, if is your direction away from foe Pernicus? That's a good question. Is Ooh. it? Uh, yeah, probably, or at least mostly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Wait, I think what Copernicus might yell out is like, "Yeah, get get me as far away from him as you can. I'm gonna try something." Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is what I will try to do. Well, so you I can, can move, move him, him fifteen feet. Or... Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So you, your bugs grab him and drag him 15 feet uh, further away from the, the melee. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so, yeah. Yeah. So that is uh, that ca that takes an action. Here, I'm just going to mm -hmm. throw so all this that leaves you with is bonus actions if you have anything you can do. Uh, that's very good. What would reloading the pistol I have? Oh, that's very cute and horrible. <laughs> Uh, very, what would reloading good. the pistol I have count as? Is that like a full turn action, or is that? <laughs> These are some excellent drawings. Yes. I keep forgetting that I have my, my laptop in my, my lap. The Service Pro, so when I lay it down, it's just, you see my forehead. That's all you see. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Honestly, what more do you need to see? Excellent. I mean. This is very good content, people. <laughs> I'm glad you guys liked it. Daddy, I want blood. There's also a very good uh, <laughs> McGargamel. Where is that one? There she is. Okay. Um, with a bonus action, you can uh, begin the process of uh, yeah, loading up. Yeah, I think that's thing I can do right now. Very good uh, wizardy Monair Smurf. Excellent. This is excellent. Excellent content. Uh, okay, in that case we move on to the uh, the people who are with you guys. Um Finster is going to pop out from the other side of the boat uh, and shout orders at the Swolums uh, and say, um, uh, Golems, attack the big demon! Uh, and then pop right back down behind the, into safety. Um, uh, and uh, the Golems will respond by lurching forward and attempting to attack Agarjag with their fists. I'm just going to quickly pull up the Flesh Golem stats so I know what their attack <laughs> breaks down to. Gotta know when to hold them and know when to swallow them. <laughs> oh, good. That's the name of this episode. That's a good one. Yep. Uh, I gotta say, that's a, that's a go. very good one. Yep, yeah, that's the title, isn't it? Gotta be. Okay, so one of them uh, attacks and just kind of uh, bonks off of uh, Agarjag's blubbery hide. And in fact, Agarjag does the same sort of swinging his big belly. He flings the golem back five feet. Um, the other one, however, actually hits him Ooh. Uh, and does a some demo. Go Swolums! Damage. And Every time I open our Discord channel, I still see that crayon. That's <laughs> so good. Image. The swollen image. Oh, it is. And that is another uh, fart damage of three damage to Ugna. Uh, I can take as it. As well as the Swollums. And Megargamel is going to attempt to cast a spell at Fopernicus. Uh, so she slings another firebolt at him. Uh, but this one actually hits. Nice. Uh, and he takes some fire damage to the chest. Having done so, 
he doubles over around where the bolt struck him uh, and begins to uh, howl in pain. But his mouth opens much wider than Copernicus's mouth should be able to open. And the howling noise stops being a human voice very quickly and rises in pitch and volume to very impossible levels as a massive swarm of locust creatures oh, comes pouring out of his mouth. Oh, great. Um, and swarms the entire uh, battlefield. Uh, swarm versus swarm. Swarm versus swarm. With Hell the, uh, yeah. The, the blast of flame. It's a lot bigger than mine, though. The blast of flame. It's not that the size the that counts. Size how you use it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> The, uh, the blast of flame uh, that did damage to him seems to have infected these creatures and they are uh, flaming little shadow locusts uh, as they fly out and spread everywhere and everyone is going to make me a saving throw uh, against some damage. Woo! I love so it. Trump everybody what kind? make me a... Hang on a second, I've forgotten. Are we at disadvantage on this? Uh, yes, because you're at disadvantage everything... on all of That's your saving throws. What were you saying, Peter? Oh my god. I, I, I love the challenge that this is like a, a demon-filled flaming hellscape of chitinous insects, and then he like walks up, and he's in the middle of a demon-filled flaming hellscape of chitinous insects. insects. Correct. You know, my, my first so roll was a nat 20, and my second roll was a 2. Oh no! My first roll was a nat 20, and my second roll was a 15, so... This is a deck save, by the way. Okay, well... I don't think a two is going to get me very far regardless. No. That I, uh... goes to a seven. What's the DC on this one? Uh, I believe it's a 17. <sighs> then I, I just make it. Would have failed either way for me. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> just double checking. Actually, I think it might be lower than that. Oh, it's only 15. Okay. So. Whew. So, who made a 15? What's Just the, on the, safe? the person with all of the hit points. Just Ugna. Okay. Yep. So you will take half damage and everyone else will take full damage. Excellent, so I'm good. I'm going to roll a significant number Can of I d6s. take their damage Great. for them? <laughs> Have a good show. This is this is cute and disturbing. So it is thirty damage. Youch. Wow. Everyone oh. who failed their saving throw takes thirty damage. Those oh. who made the saving throw take half. I am at two. Oh no. no. This is all bad. Uh, I am going to roll. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I was gonna, I'm gonna characters. Manera Smurf rolled a one and a two. Oh no. Uh, it's like she's a wizard. That is a very unnecessary Don't be a wizard. Um, that is so most of her 15. hit points. Um, good thing she hasn't taken any damage yet. Uh, and the Swolems are not great at this, and they both fail and take some damage. Oh, Finster actually rolled amazing. Oh. So he doesn't take any... He take, well, he takes half damage, 15. All right. Oh, and Garms in the area, too. I should do Garms. Oh, wait, he doesn't have disadvantage. No, he's yeah, fine. He's good. I mean, he's not fine. He takes 15 damage. He's not happy about it. Stupid big dumb things. Stop making vomit bug fire. I agree. I mean, he's got a point. <laughs> yeah. All right. Another another prancing Tromlin baby. Oh. But, he's oh. so happy to drink your blood. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Love it. So next up uh, is in fact Fopernicus. Uh, and Fopernicus uh, is going to go, all right, well, this seems to be working, so I'm going to concentrate on it and keep it going. No. Uh oh. Oh, oh no. God. And the, uh, the swarm is going to specifically descend on Copernicus. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no. uh, Bye, Perny. 
And so, I, Copernicus, I, you are now coming towards him. You have lifted oh, no, off the ground. Oh, oh, he's dragging me back towards. Yeah, you have been lifted off the ground by the locusts, oh, oh, and they are bringing you towards Fopernicus. I'm in a and his, and his, his, his gaping maw, which is yeah, growing ever wider. You can't even try to escape. That's my whole thing, and now you're doing it. Hey, stealing your shit, man. Man. Hate it. Gimmick infringement, as they say. In He's wrestling. stealing your legless old guy and your shtick. Yep. yep. Um, I don't like it. Uh, you could make me a strength save, though, Copernicus, with disadvantage. Okay. This is this gonna is go great. Probably not gonna go well. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's right. good. It's two, good. Two two dice. Take the worst at a minus one. You're What's just an old DC? man with no legs. It's fine. Yeah, your DC is fifteen. All right. Impossible. Five and a five makes a four. That's four. That's a four. This is, again, there's a lot of disadvantage that actually didn't do anything in this particular mm -hmm. encounter. Hey, if you roll bad enough, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> now you are also going to take some damage from this, which is going to put you down to to below zero. zero. But yeah. I do believe you have that thing that makes you. No, I, I still go under. I can when other people go under. I can steal. Oh, it's their, what, yeah, it's when other people can, go under. You can, can steal, their, steal their life. Yeah, but if I'm down, I'm down. Oh boy. Oh boy. So Copernicus right. goes limp in the grasp of the the flaming demon locusts. As Ooh. as a as a free action, can I dramatically whisper, "I'm coming, Barb." <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, you can. Oh, and no. the locusts have also grabbed uh, the bucket. Good. And uh, they are being drawn towards uh, oh, Fopernicus, whose maw has now opened to the point where his head is completely hinged back, and the mouth is still growing. Fun. It's like Fun. a couple of feet across now. And growing. Um, next up would be Perny, but he is kind of occupied. Uh, I would like at this stage a uh, a um, Randy. Mm -hmm. uh, the decision that was made at the end was that you weren't weren't going to limit yourself to worshiping Loth, or you, so you are going to limit yourself to worshiping. Loth. I worship Loth. Um, okay. Because for, for, I want the to be able yeah. To, until yeah. Just needed to know for reasons that will become clear later. Uh -oh. Um. And uh, that leaves us getting back to Garm, uh, who's really just going to keep shooting at the big scary thing that clearly seems to be. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to randomize because maybe he's smart enough to shoot at the thing that the locusts are coming out of. Yeah, that seems that's, bad. That's the thing that hurt him. Yeah, he's going to shoot at that. So he is Good shooting boy. at a full Pernicus. Um and that's going to miss. That is a terrible roll. All right. So he shoots an arrow at Fulpernicus, and it goes wide. And you hear him cursing in wolfish or whatever. He makes those little, those little Arr. unhappy dog noises. <laughs> uh, and next up is Ubna. Okay. Uh, that hurt. Ow. I don't know what's happening. I'm okay. going to... I think I heard Agrodag nearby. So I'm just going to swing yep. at him with my hammer. Because the, the hugging thing did not work. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a three oh. and a five. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, no. That will that will not make his, no. uh, his armor class. Even with a plus eight. No. <gasps> okay, that's better. That's better. 17, I believe. 11 and 17... Uh, so with a plus eight, that is uh, eighteen. That breaks, breaks his seventeen. So you did hit him on good. this one. Good, good, good. Uh, uh, and I'm going to dump. This? I am very much goosing this because I may not be up for another round. <laughs> um, disarming attack. Yeah, that's a strength though. I mean, it does extra damage anyway. That's it's true. Still worth. Yep. I don't think you have anything that isn't strength save. I, uh, the only thing I have is the fainting attack, but that'll give me advantage on my next yeah, that's thing, and I don't know hit. that I'm up for that. So yeah, let's yeah, uh, dump some extra damage on him. You because you're blind as well as cursed. No, exactly. So two advantages to overcome. So I'm just going to try and disarm him. Maybe he'll roll right. shitty on his strength. 
He has. Uh, ba, 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 What's your DC? It is a... I have a 14. I don't it know doesn't say on here. It. it just says, must strength save or drop object. Uh, I believe go the disarming. saving throws for the battle master are disarming attack calculated... I believe they're calculated the same way as uh, spell striking. Uh, 8 plus your proficiency plus your strength or dex, which you choose. Right. So what's your strength Ten. bonus? Like, uh, that's 5. A lot. Yeah, so 8 plus 5 plus 2... No, 3. Right? You know, three your proficiency, proficiency bonus is 3. Yeah. yeah. So it's 16. 16. So he failed it. Hey, time for some damage. So he did, in fact, knock his great uh, serrated axe out of his Ooh. hands. How much damage uh, do you roll? 16 axe. and 4 yeah, is 20. 20, 20 nice. straight to the face. Bam! Uh, he lets out a big fart. Good. And you take another 3 damage. Yep. Um, Ow. I thought someone else was... Oh, the, the Swollums also takes 3 damage. Um... And, uh, yeah, you have used both of your attacks, but uh, this is probably the point you want to use your action surge, I'm assuming? Uh, yes, correct. <laughs> that is uh, what I am doing, because I have not so, used it today. Time to keep it going. I mean, you guys just got up. This stuff, like, yep. hit you right in the face. So Very another nice. action. Yep. Let's another disadvantage attack. Go. Woo. Uh, 12 plus 8. That'll do it. 20. That'll do it. Nice. AC All right. 17. I am dumping another uh, combat maneuver on this. Let's call this a pushing attack. Sure. Sure. Let's do it. Uh, he made that save. Okay, cool. He does not I'm still going to dump some damage into his face. Go for it. Five. Uh, it's eight plus uh, b -b -b another seven. So 16. Another 15 damage? Yep. Yeah. 15 and, and 20. you got another attack like you your action serve mm -hmm. gives you your whole yep your everything whole again action tree <laughs> back <laughs> that's a high the low rolls a 16 on that one Excellent. so i hit that's again definitely a hit. let's dump yet another, put maneuver. another maneuver into it that's mm -hmm. now how that's many? five six that's five no you did you did um you did one uh last time or you did the, in the first round, you Oh, right, yes, so that is six. So, you so I only six. have... Yep, all right. Yeah. So roll your damage. Oh, nice. Seven and seven, and another seven. It's 21. Nice. nice. Okay, so both of those hits, again, cause farting gas to come out, so there's yep. another total another of 10 damage. Ouch. Okay, I'm getting a little, a little wobbly now. Um, trying to get he that also is again. looking... Pretty wobbly. So to describe this, uh, seeing Copernicus go down, Ugna takes the hammer and just goes to town on his face. And like, you know, remember how his the drawing, his teeth are all like in different directions, all staying out. Teeth fly everywhere as you yep. pound the hammer repeatedly into his face. And every hit makes just a big stanky fart. Just like it's also, I, I was trying to grab him before and do something, and I couldn't find him. And now I, like, poked him once with my hammer, and I just went, okay. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm driving a stake into the ground. I, I'm imagining yeah. the Super Smash Brothers hammer motion. Yep. Yes, like, yes. And, and he's cartoonishly deforming and reforming each, with each hit. Right? With a little... And with, with, like, farts yep. of acid. <laughs> damaging everyone at the same time. Uh, Ugna also looks like quite bloodied. She's got uh, uh, like burn marks all over her armor. There's splatters of blood. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got that look in her eyes of like just on the edge of rage. Mm -hmm. oh, this is uh, the edge of rage. Yeah, We're yeah. not even. Yeah, we're right. there. Wow. Yeah. No. More coming. Okay. But, but we might not because it's aggravated. Mix of rage too. and fear. Oh, actually, so, Lane, you were right and I was wrong. I actually do gain 10 HP on a death on death save, is what Defy Death ah. says. Yes, yes. So so you haven't made your death save yet. This round you will. Oh, but my, we I guess, no, you went down to four, so yeah. you should have yeah. yeah, made well, your death save. Yeah, and is this at disadvantage? Yeah. Oh, nuts. All right, I'm going to roll one at a time so I can use uh, inspiration if I need it. 
Yep. Um, okay, so how does the death save work? I haven't done one in 5e. I've, had, I've been blessed to not have to do one in 5e. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you've been, you've been blessed. Uh, I don't know that you necessarily get disadvantage on a death save, though, because it's not a normal saving throw. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, my think you get Shadow DM just messaged on... me and said the same thing. Yeah. So. That would just but be uh, in, any case, is, I'm yeah. Just, in any case, the death save uh, is made um, when you hit zero hit points and when you start your turn. And it's just uh, a d20. And Two it's just a straight D20 Ten or roll. better. Okay. Yeah, 50-50 chance. All right. So that's a four so on you... the first one. So that's a fail. Okay, second one. Uh, well, you don't need to roll more than one. You roll it once. So oh, when your next turn round. happens, I'll yeah. have you roll again. Oh, but but I, I went down, and then I had my turn, and we skipped it. So it's, I, I'm retroactively asking to claim that turn that we skipped with mine. That, that's the one you just rolled. Your second turn hasn't happened yet. It's oh, Agri Jack's okay. turn. I thought you said I roll one as soon as I go down. No, you roll one. All, when you start your turn at zero hit points, you roll one. Oh, okay. So Maybe. last round I skipped you, but you should have made a death save. Okay. And which is you there did. Any way, any way to use uh, inspiration on a death save or no? Is it non goosable For the same reason, uh, I, advantage doesn't work. I would say no. Okay. In this case, this is the kind of thing I would allow a hero point to be spent on. But... Uh, what does your thing do? You get 10 hit points when you fail your death save, or when you make your death save, on, or when... You... On death save is all it says, so I assume that means successful. Or when using the cantrip. Mm. Just to, just let me look it up real quick. This is, Which cantrip is this again? Uh, so it's defy death as a patron feature. Right, right, right. This is what I was thinking of. I was pretty sure you had a thing that let you come back up. You've also got the... When you succeed. When you succeed on a death save... You will not just stabilize, you will also gain a D8 plus your con Ooh. in hit points. But you have to make a death save first. You just need to succeed on one. Okay, Agri Jag's turn. I have seven hit points, ready to go. Yes. Uh, Agri Jag no longer has an axe. That's true. Um, he flaps his vestigial wings in fury. He's very displeased. Um... And he is going to come at you with his claws instead. Come at me, bro. Uh, Seventeen? Uh, that, that is my AC. <laughs> okay, so he just hit you. Yep. Oh. Uh, his damage is nowhere near as much, though, with the claw attack. Right. He does... Six damage. What do you have left? <laughs> One. <laughs> One hit, whole hit, hit point. point he has Good. a second attack. Yep. That will definitely hit. Oh, yeah. I roll a 15 plus yep. his bonus. So this is another, this is seven damage. Okay, I'm down. Okay. But you have the orc thing. I know, yeah. When you go down, you actually go to one and are still up. Yep. No, cinematically, though, I go down. I He, like, swipes me and I, ugh. Oh. Uh, or at least I'm I'm now, you know, I go down one knee. I'm not drop prone, but anyone else Boy. would have been torn apart by that. And clearly you're about to do the Hulk Hogan thing, aren't you? You go down on one knee mm -hmm. and you start, like, like pumping your fists. Yep. <laughs> yeah, of course. The crowd cheers. The, the Swirlums, <laughs> like, just stand there. But, the but like, Fe, uh, uh, Fe, Finster pokes his head up and goes, yay! <laughs> it's the crowd cheering. <laughs> <laughs> if we were in the ring, this would be this would be the moment. Well, the next thing that happens is that these swollums are about to attempt to um, uh, grapple Agrajag, uh, as Finster says, "Get him!" Direct them to do this, um, and he succeeds against one of them, but fails against the other. So one of them has grappled him around the middle. Um, But he has taken no damage, so I'm going to leave it at that. So he doesn't fart you back down to zero. Good. <laughs> the most ignoble death. <laughs> like, no, wait. <laughs> oh, oh, oh I'm, at, I'm at nose level. Oh, no, it's worse. <laughs> Was that English king who got stabbed in the ass? 
<laughs> oh, um, one of the Edwards. Shitting? I forget which yeah. Edward. While he was shitting. Yep. He shoved a, uh, shoved a poker up Amazing. Away. Great. Um, That's the most noble death until the farting. Mm-hmm. And uh, Manair Smurf is going to fling... Uh, actually, what is she going to cast? Oh, my she God. No healing spell magic of any kind. That's not going to... Good. I'm just trying to think what she could do to help you, and I don't know that there is much that's relevant. I don't know on... if you can see this like giant pile of feathers, but my birds are falling apart. <laughs> Meg dropped two. Do you have the wing feathers? Meg oh, dropped yeah. two major wing primaries simultaneously this morning. They're just sitting here on my monitor preening and like just dropping a snow of feathers <laughs> onto my character mm -hmm. sheet. Can you tell it's almost autumn? Mm -hmm. Gotta grow in those fluffy feathers. Yeah, Ollie is blowing his coat, and no. it is not great. Oh. I swear he produces as much fur as Shelby did. He's half her size. Mm -hmm. Just a floofy uh, boy. So, Miner Smurf throws another firebolt at Perny in the hopes of breaking his concentration. Or at faux Perny. In the hopes of breaking his concentration on whatever this crazy spell he's doing is. Um, he takes more damage... But he does not break his concentration. Ooh. He's made his saving throw. Um, however, he is going to, since it's his turn next, kind of annoyedly flick a finger in her direction as his head continues to like rubberize and grow into this bigger and bigger portal into darkness that uh, the, the locusts are carrying Copernicus towards. And he flicks a finger in uh, Nagargamel's direction um, and a bolt of... Uh, black energy eldritch blast of some sort uh, lances out and she goes down. Great. Um, and Copernicus, you're now like practically in swallowing range as you've moved another 15 feet towards him. Uh, roll me your death save. Oh, I think you muted. Get? I can't hear you. Natural one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> okay, I don't... I, I'm, I don't know that I'm going to use the rule, but I do believe if you're rolling that one on a death That's save, two. it counts as two failed yep. death saves. So oh, three. no. That's three, Dan. So, um, but I don't know... Yeah, I believe if you fail... Uh, I don't think you have to... I don't think it's you fail three and you're done. You do have a yes. If you fail three, you're dead. Okay. Oh boy. But... I'll I'll take the I'll take the flub if you'll allow it on the uh, on that counts as one and not two. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the uh, nat one death save rule. So. All right. Come back to me in another round. Yeah, it's too fast. <laughs> oh boy! Only if only we had a cleric. Oh. Back. <laughs> oh, there's a very good idea. Anyway, I'll come back to this next round. Mm. I'll be right back, guys. I need to feed yep. my daughter. Sure. Um, okay, so we are back to the top of the round. Um, Garm is um, quite possibly uh, considering this uh, a loss <laughs> and cutting his... I mean... <laughs> I'm out! And cutting his losses. So I am going to have him uh, take his action to hide. Um, he's given away his position by firing arrows, so he is going to full-on cast Pass Without Trace and vanish and, you know, keep a bow and arrow ready in case he can help out, but if it doesn't look like there's much point, he doesn't want to be found. So... Who can blame him? Yeah. Uh, next up, Ugna. You have one hit point left. I have one hit point left. Uh, I have a potion in my pocket. Copernicus is also dead. Yeah. And dangling. Yep. Chug, chug. Yeah, chug, I'm gonna chug. chug. I'm gonna chug and then <laughs> and then try to hit him. Uh, I, I didn't write down what kind these are. Wait I think you second. just gave us like a standard. We we skipped Fetid's turn. We oh, skipped yeah, we did. Fetid's turn. Oh, did we? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I was still reloading. Yeah, all right. No, I mean, you could uh, be. But, like, you have other options. 
Yeah, uh, okay, uh, I could either attempt to heal somebody, or I could continue frantically loading my gun with the aim of hopefully shooting Fopernicus in his stupid mouth. Uh, it's up to you, which would you prefer? almost dead dead. <laughs> yeah, I would like to get over to, um, oh wait, can I stabilize Perny? So you're gonna have to get over to him. Oh, yeah. to the distance from yeah. you now. Uh, uh, and I think it's gonna yeah. take. I think it's gonna take a dash action. So you'd have to spend your whole action getting over there, or find another way. I don't know if you have uh, any ranged healing. I, I don't think you do. No, I don't. Um, is riding tide? A, that would get me ten feet fly speed three times for long rest. I don't know if that would get me there. A uh, tiny wing feather. Let me have a look so at that. Small. I think if I think with that you would have enough movement to get to Ugna. Okay. Yeah, Slap right. Slap me on the back and be like, "Go, champ!" Action. So you can, you could move your movement and then add ten feet fly speed and be close enough to Ugna to cast a heal spell on her. All right, I'm gonna do that then. That seems like a, the best case okay. use for right now. It does put uh, you so near yeah, all the parts, but at least you <laughs> get to do a heal. I, I, I have a, I'm fifteen whole hit points. I'm doing great. Uh, so yeah, I'll do a, I'll do a Cure Wounds on Ugna. Uh, that's a spell Excellent. level one. I, can I bump that up? Yes, you can. You can cast it as a level two, in which case you will do 2d8 plus your Ooh. spell casting modifier, which is Wisdom. Divide it, d8. That's a d8. So that will give 2d8 plus four hit points. Uh, Ugna, you get 12 hit points back. Hey, that gives me 13. That, mm -hmm. is, that is a good amount. And I think that will do it for my turn, unless I, unless I have anything left that I can do. I don't know that you had anything else you can do as a bonus at this yeah. stage. Yeah. I had my second win marked off, and I don't know when I used it. That was from the previous game. Oh, okay, I just didn't erase it. Because remember, it, you guys just woke up. Right, right. Before so, they started. I do you, still you have had that a long rest, second wind. So wind. you have that. You haven't used it since you guys got up and discovered this was happening. Excellent. Um, so it is your turn. Yep. Do you want to use your healing I am going to use that healing search because, uh, mm -hmm. oh boy. Okay. 1d10. That, that will give you your, what is it? Uh, 1d10 plus, plus 7. Right. Yep. So that is an 8. Plus seven. It's another fifteen. That's nice. That's twenty-eight. Um and and so I, I feel a little cobalt hand on my back and then like a warm <laughs> surge of energy. And I go It's really hey, clammy at first. Then it, it starts to feel a little better. D point me at Agrajag. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna seize the the back of her belt and try yeah, to I will aim call her this. Direction. Uh, I will call this uh, an aid Ooh. action. Hell yes! Which is going <laughs> to which is going to counter one of your two disadvantages. Ooh. If you spend an inspiration, you'll have I no am, disadvantage. I am doing that. Oh yeah! I am a hundred percent doing to that. See it. Teamwork. Hell yeah! Makes that dream work. Between okay. the two of us, we are one functional <laughs> player character. Excellent. Good. With your one hand, you point the blind fighter mm -hmm. towards the... <laughs> so that's just a straight-up attack. I'm not a disadvantage. Yep. Oh, yeah. yep. oh, hell yeah. That is a 16. Yep. 16 total, or with... Uh, nope, 16 with plus uh, okay, 8. Because <laughs> I was going to say 16 would miss by 1. Yeah, so yeah, just... you so totally 24. hit. Boom. Roll your damage. Damage time. Uh, I, uh, do you have any maneuvers left? I don't. I'm out now. Okay, so just straight up damage? Yep. All right. Whew. Can you inspiration a, a uh, damage roll? A damage roll? I'll allow it. Okay, okay. I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop two inspiration on this here round of combat, because <laughs> I rolled a two. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a 10! That was so Yay. worth it. <laughs> Much better. So damage is... Uh, 10 plus 7, 17. 17 damage. 
It hit. Woo. Another spray of teeth go flying. Good. Um, both of you take another three damage. Good. From fart. Okay. It's 25. Still good. Still good. From fart area effect. Oh, um, well, and Fede, it, it's your turn again because this uh, is where we had skipped you last time. All right. Uh, uh, second one was a bonus uh, action. Fire. I still have one oh, attack. Sorry. sorry. Yes, Ugna has oh, another yeah. attack. Yeah. You're not done. Uh, 13 plus 8 should hit him. That's it. That hits. Yep. All right. I will have one more attack. Heck yeah. Uh, 7 plus 7 is 14. To the face. 14 more damage. And an additional, ooh, 6 damage to the Oof. both of y'all from Ow. the fart. Down to hey, 19. What was the damage you did again? Uh, seven, seventeen, 17. Or, four, 14, 17. sorry. 7 and 7. 14. 14. Okay. All right. Um, right. Um, Thank you, baby. So at this point, now we move on to uh, what's left of the PC of the other characters. Fe uh, Fe Finster okay, is going to continue. Me. What about my turn? Oh, sorry. Right. Fed it's time. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, forgot, I, I forgot that Alina had a second attack. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I was like, yeah, we did the thing I was going to do. No, nope. now it's Fed it. Fed it. What do you want to do? Uh, now can I reach for me? Uh, you should be able to, I think, from this distance. Yes, he's he's been moved three times. Okay. So 45. So you should oh, be right. able to reach him with uh, your regular movement plus your... Uh, extra movement from your okay. your swarm should just awesome. get you there. Um, You're gonna be like surfing these bugs into the air to like. <laughs> yeah, basically. Good. Uh, so if I want to stabilize him, is that like, do I cast heal wounds? Do I? How do I? How do I do this? I mean, if you cast a cure cure wounds, he just comes. That that's just gets not stable. Back, that's right. he's back up, right? Sweet. All right, I'm gonna do that again. Can I goose this one as well? Yes, you can. Cast it second level. I think you have two second level spell slots, so this would be your second. That would. That would be. No, you have three. Sense. You have three. So you have one left after this, too. All right. So Kearney gets back six plus one. So 11 hit points. Yay. Nice. You are not dead. Yay. Okay. You're only mostly dead like the rest of us. <laughs> Yay. All right. Fine. Just stuff is going to happen here now. It's good. So, number one, the, uh, the two. Uh, Swolems are attempting again to constrain Agrajag. Um, and uh, another fart escapes Agrajag and does another five damage to the Swolems and also to Ow. Um, Ugna. Ow. 14. <laughs> um, Copernicus, seeing Copernicus aroused, take that how you will, <laughs> is upset about this. Uh, oh, and the uh, howling reaches another fever pitch, and the swarm of locusts oh, that is carrying Copernicus is going to um, explode outwards and do some additional damage. The two flesh golems are shredded. Uh, right. They didn't have a ton yeah, of hit points, and they've already damage. taken a bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're shredded in more than one way now. <laughs> um, uh, McGonner, uh, McGargamel, who had made, uh, who had stabilized, uh, is now ticking down again from this additional damage. Ow. Um, additional damage to Ugna and Fetid, uh, and Copernicus is going to be another, uh, deck save, please. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh, 17? <laughs> 18 and then a 2. Right. Oh. So that two will fail. We, oh, sorry, your total 16. was what, Lena? Uh, sixteen. All right, because I with disadvantage, I had a fifteen and a fourteen. <laughs> yep, that makes it. Yep, good. Who? Copernicus. I'm burning an inspo and I'm giving myself a net twenty with it. <laughs> good, um. good. Excellent. Um, so that means that uh, Fetid is going to take eighteen damage. Down. And the other two of you are going to take nine. Ooh. <laughs> At 
one. That takes you back down to one? Uh, two. I believe it gives me, I got five whole hit points. It's great. Yeah, we're doing great. It's fine. Okay. It's good. Um, but also... I have chances to not die. Uh, Copernicus, I also need a strength save from you with your disadvantage. Because he is still pulling you towards him. No. I'm looking forward to the adventure, uh... Or just me and my babies and my own entire party died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all going to roll up new characters as your horrible spider children. <laughs> Alright, there's, uh, there's no repairing a four and a five, so it's a, it's a fail either way. Hey, so you are still being drawn towards the maw. You're practically right there. You can, like, feel the heat of whatever realm is beyond this portal. Uh, and I would like Randy to roll initiative. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, no. Roll high, oh. sir. I, I make you no promises. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you just guaranteed I'm going to get one. Mm. Break um, a leg. <laughs> nope, I actually got a pretty good roll. Hold on. Um, let's see. What is my initiative? It is a plus three. 21. Oh. 21. Okay, good. Then I know where I'm going to place you in the order. But you're going to go at the bottom of the round either way. Um. First of all, so basically on Copernicus's turn, mm -hmm. uh, you have taken this additional, you, you've come around from like Fetid grabbing you and healing you. Uh, who, th then there is another blast of flames from all these tiny uh, demon locusts. Fetid drops. Um, you are now being drawn directly into the maw of this uh, shadow. Um, and you feel the hot breeze that's coming from this realm and it's familiar to you um that's all i'll say about that uh and as you're about to act you are distracted despite all this crazy stuff that's going on to you um probably because through the like dark sea of shadow creatures all around you with their like shadowy flames um is a spark of light uh through the shadow um, as you see a uh, an an avatar, uh, a flying spider um, descending good. from the sky, uh, carrying in its in its uh, mini limbs, sort of all all bundled up like a little uh, prey, uh, is uh, with but the head sticking out is clearly Tromlin, uh, and this thing is lowering. So Tromlin, um, going through your bag of tricks and figuring out your spells, once you lost the trail, um, you were trying to figure out what you could do to keep uh, to find the group, even. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you remembered that the keystone of your bead, uh, necklace of prayer beads uh, allows you to summon a planar ally. Right. Um, and so being in pretty decent with Lolth right now from the, the your recent adventure, uh, <laughs> you uh, a fan. <laughs> you summoned up a uh, a a flying spirit, a uh, planar creature, which in this case is a is a winged spider, um, and uh, asked it to do you a favor a of uh, of fly you over the landscape so you could try and spot where in the distance your friends might be, and then there was a crazy explosion of flames and all kinds of other weird shit going on. Uh, a few I'm mountains over the horizon. Around. And you figured that's got to be it. Um, Something is exploding in the landscape. It's got to be my friends. I don't suppose I can take a quick shot at this. What would you like to do? Guiding bolt at uh, Folk Pernicus. <laughs> yes, you can do that. I'm going to also ask, since I'm going to call this simultaneous, Copernicus, what would you like to do as you awake and are almost drawn through your your brother-in-law slash shadow's maw. Uh, I would like to know arcana-wise what would happen um, <laughs> if I showed him barb. <laughs> if, like, up close Ooh. I gave him, like, all the barrels of barb. In the face full of barb. <laughs> um, you're not sure, but you think it would probably be something fairly spectacular. <laughs> all right. And yeah, Perny, as he comes up, says, if we're going down, we're going down together. And he pulls the bucket open um, full force in front of Okay. Oh, what a nice uh, grandma. Nudes. <laughs> I think I will say, bear witness to the sun's radiance. Uh, Excellent. Oh, good. 
And we all so might want to have Raiders of the Lost Ark this, by the way. Yeah, you released... Yeah. I can't that see. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. So just, <laughs> just before you do that... Yeah, just before you do that, a lance of radiance from the heavens... Yes! ...spikes down into yeah. uh, Fro Pernicus's face. Um, why don't you just... Roll you attack. automatically hit. Just go ahead and roll me your damage. Um, no, I think we need to keep this roll. Oh, is it in that 20? Is a twenty. <laughs> Excellent. Good, good. Roll your damage and double it. Yes. And I'm casting this as a, a higher level spell, so I get the. Yep. Yes. Incredible. Yep. Roll your five d six damage. Just roll the five d six and tell me what it is, and I will uh, take it from there. I'm rolling right now, and the total is. Twenty one. 21 damage, which is going to be doubled, but it's also radiant damage, and it's going to do extra damage to this demonic thing that's happening here. Hell so, yes. So, full perny, uh, eyes go wide ex and, and explodes into basically a cloud of shadow. The, the portal is still within this cloud of shadow as Copernicus, uh, the locust things start just vanishing and disappearing, and you are dropped uh, to the ground. But you're still in front of this portal, and you have the bucket aimed. You pull open the top and release the full fury of Barbar Hotep uh, into the uh, into the um, uh, the maw of this abyss, and uh, there is a gout of green, eerie, otherworldly energy. Uh, and the only person really going to notice this. Uh, descending from the heavens is you, uh, Tromlin, is you almost see like uh, a woman's form within the green mist and flame uh, of a, a gaunt, almost skeletal form uh, with, that seems to be almost like wrapped tightly, desiccated and wrapped tightly uh, in bindings with like a crown uh, the eyes are just pure white. The hair floating in the green energy uh, is long and white. Um, the the skull-like face is uh, lipless, like opens, and like the the between the teeth, just a a, a um, barrel of of uh, uh, energy that fires forth into this shadow, and then the entire shadow closes and basically compacts into a shadow um, that falls to the ground and becomes Copernicus's shadow, just a normal shadow extending out from Copernicus's body uh, as the light would, um, would angle it. And Copernicus, the bucket, falls to the ground. It's just a bucket. Um, there's a little bit of ash that you might you quickly frantically scoop back in and clamp the lid back on and yep. the, all of that fury of sound just stops dead how does agrajag Next. react to this uh agrajag uh just took the last of his hit points oh god uh from uh <laughs> so his body is starting to form cracks Having seen the, the swollums that were holding him shred, he scrambles away from you, Ugna, ignoring you, scrambling towards Copernicus as he goes, No, no, this is my chance! Um, you get an attack of opportunity. I'm going to do that. Get him. Get him. Oh, 11 plus 8, though, is uh, That'll hit him. Huh. 19. That'll hit him. So you, you, as he's scrambling away from you, hit him one last time. You take the hammer up over your head, two-handed, bring it down on his body, which bursts. Good. Like, Good. Oh, yeah. like a rubber ball that's been compressed too many times where the cracks are forming. He Good. just bursts open. Um, there's a gout of that nasty, stinky fart gas. Um, and you take another four damage. I have one left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still up. <laughs> so I, um, I, I take it in the face. Just this, and then I... I'm like yelling and, and, and screaming as I hit uh, Agrajag with the hammer. 
and then pant, pant, lean on the hammer really, really heavily, and just slump down to the ground. Uh, and the last moment of Agrajag's explosion, you you hear the fading voice into the distance of, "Damn you, Copernicus!" <laughs> Get in line. I, I yell out, "Eat a dick, Agrajag!" <laughs> Uh, so descending from above with your your Tromlin? winged spider friend, uh, <laughs> who's going to set you down, you see collapsing Ugna, you see Fetid lying on the ground, uh, unconscious and bleeding, uh, you see um, Megargamel, who uh, who you you know you know because you were uh, there at the beginning of the journey with her, um, also lying unconscious on the ground. Uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of dying people. Okay. Um, holy shit. Um, y'all apparently needed me. Um, Trollin, buddy, is, is that, is that really you? Yeah, yeah, you're, I'll get to you in a second. Anyone yeah. who is unconscious, I'm going to cast Spare the Dying on immediately. Hey, um, hey, Fede, I'm going to get your first two death saves because you've got to have two by now. And we'll see if you're at least stabilized. First one is a one. Second one oh, is a 12. Okay, so the first one was, you know, technically no, two, yes. if we're using that rule. No. But uh, you made the second one. But honestly, you're, you're just sort of on the edge here when Traumlin comes along. Uh, mm -hmm. Magargamel has failed, too. Spare the dying. Um, Copernicus, you also could do a spare the dying, if you wish. Yeah, I'll do it. And I think you get hit points back if you do that. I do indeed. A D8 plus 7. Yeah. So you, like, spare the dying on Fetid and, like, you know, steal a little of his soul at the same time, but, you know. Yeah, it's fine. What's that? Between friends. A little soul between friends. It's fine. Okay, I guess I'll start doing some cure wounds. Probably all my first level spells for the day, I have a feeling. So let's get, let's take our break. Because this is a this is our normal and break time. Some good RP um, when we and get back. Pick this up with some RP. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> good. Get ready to get yep. hit in the feels. <laughs> we'll see y'all in uh, ten All minutes. Right. Yep, ten minutes or so. All right. Uh, I'm we'll going to break. See ya. Bye.